fresh penis. Get your fresh penis here. Tim, Jesus Christ. Still has that new penis smell. You shut up. All right, I'm just trying to help. Now, uh, let's start with the basics. The two Ted films are obviously two of the most successful R-rated movies of all time. Oh, God, that was so good. Now I'm going to stuff my fucking face with Pepperidge Farm. It's been about a decade, a little less now, since the last one. And I assume there must have been talks at some point about doing Ted 3. How did this eventually become a series? There haven't ever really been any serious talks about doing a Ted 3. After Ted 2, we weren't sure if there was still an insatiable appetite for more Ted. And that coincided with my desire to go do the Orville. When I signed my deal with Universal, one of the first things they said was, would you ever consider doing a Ted series for Peacock? And I said, wow, what's Peacock? No, I'm kidding. No, but uh, no, I, I said, I, I, that's an intriguing idea. Oh, it's For weeks, it was going to be a multicam. We sort of explored both what that would look like in terms of script and just creatively and also technically, because that would provide quite a challenge. Hey, dog, you bringing your dolls to school? It's the 90s, times are changing. Given the time period in my head, I'm sort of picturing something like ALF or something that's maybe a riff on TGIF sitcoms. What was sort of your vision there if you had done it as a multicam? The idea of doing a, a sitcom with an audience, with an animated character, and keep in mind, the tone would still be the same. There was no talk of ever changing it and softening it. You know, we're not doing who's the boss. What happened to the TV? It was an accident. You're going to school and you're gonna grow a brain. Oh, come on. The idea of, of shooting something with an audience, because audiences are savvy now, they, if they can hear the bear's voice, the laughs are going to be there if the jokes are funny. And then adding the bear in later was something that was so interesting to me. Never seen anything like it. The only reason we didn't do it is that Peacock wanted the show pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. It's still something that to me is interesting. I'd like to try it at some point because I do think it can be done. Sometimes I think back to that Christmas morning when I was eight years old. I wish I'd just gotten a Teddy Ruxpin. Say that one more time. Teddy Rucks f***ing pin! Now, let's talk a bit about sort of recasting, so to speak, the Mark Wahlberg role. I'm the buddies for life, right, Johnny? F***ing right. You've obviously worked with Max before. He'd done some voice work for you. He was on the Orville. What made him the right choice for John Bennett? In this instance, Max stood out so clearly as the guy, uh, it was just a no-brainer. I mean, every joke was delivered pitch perfectly. How bad is school gonna suck? You're not gonna like it. How bad? Well, it's like getting your nuts smashed together so hard they become just one nut. He really found a good balance between just enough of the swagger of Wahlberg to get a hint of what he was going to become in the future, but at the same time, very clearly occupying the kind of awkward beta male phase that we that we established early on in the movie that uh, that John was before he came into his own sexual education. Let's start with masturbation. If you're going to assign homework, Johnny already did it this morning. Hey, shut the f up, dude. You know the whole thing was intimidating at first, like an accent that I've never had to work with before, working more closely with Seth than I ever have before, yeah. and sort of like a, a, a bigger, you know, more forefront role than I've ever done before. So the whole thing was a little intimidating going into it, but, you know, Georgia and Scott and Alana and Seth and everybody on the crew were so lovely and welcoming and sweet and funny and just down to play that after like a week, week and a half, around the same time that I could start really seeing the bear, yeah, those nerves were gone. And it was just, it was time to have fun. I live in this house, this is my family, yeah. yeah. Well, one of the really impressive things about Max was, you know, he made a choice in the audition not to do an impression of Mark Wahlberg, but to do his own version of the character, obviously staying true to the character. And boy, that's, that was, it just jumped off the screen when we saw it. So it was, it became clear pretty quickly he was the one. How often would you say you have intercourse? It's none of your business. Look, why don't we just stick Every to six months. So the first thing I thought while watching this is how weird it must be for you guys take even the initial dinner scene, right? And you're sitting there and you're acting opposite this inanimate object. You know, we're seeing the world. You got that bad, she's, she's nice. <laughs> He was talking about- Oh, the bear! <laughs> you, Scott. Sorry. You. <laughs> We're seeing the work of these incredible visual effects artists, but that's not what you're seeing while you're filming. I'm curious what the setup was with this particular show. Are you staring at, like, a tennis ball on a stick? Is there just, like, a, 
And sometimes it's a stand with two eyeballs and sometimes nothing. You wish it was a tennis ball and a if something. Anything. anything. Yeah, yeah. It's nothing. Yeah. We're just looking at empty space. In the beginning, they have a little stick with two eyeballs on it. Oh, sometimes yeah. Sometimes they the would use that tool. to show us where to look, yeah. uh, but then they take it away and they're like, good luck. So, yeah, yeah it was a, it was a, an adjustment. But so, um, sometimes they'd have a little Ted doll uh, while camera was setting up. Yeah, they would be like, so here's where he's going to go. He's yeah, going to yeah. jump and then he's going to flip. And yeah, so we just had to make it up. Yeah. For the majority of the time, it was the stand with two eyeballs. And that was your eye line. And you would hear uh, Seth, Ted's voice, you know, to your left. And he would be off camera watching the scene while directing and, and acting in the, in the scene at the same time. While they had all of these little emotion um, detectors, you know, stuck to him because he's so, acting he's right he's there doing it with the us. whole time the whole time yeah and it was wow. it, you know it, it's it's amazing how quickly you forget at first when you're doing it like this is never going to be easy to try to talk to a thing that's not there okay. and then it just it, it, you know, it just happened it would you do it, it you know you just get comfortable okay now i want you to turn to each other and say the meanest thing you can think of this is being billed as a seven episode event series which is sort of code for limited series but Nothing is limited anymore in success. Could there be a TED season two? Anything is possible. Anything is possible. I, I, I would not want to shoehorn uh, uh, the show into into a category as far as its, its sustainability. It depends on the response. If, if there's an appetite for it, anything is possible.